Tall Hoga Michael Dock Stater. I'm a Mohawk turtle from the Six Nations of the Indian Reserve. My clan's name is Satigadi Wade, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about my experience and my relationship with the two row on the ground. And one of the ways to start is, uh, I, I know you've probably had other people talk about uh, what this is called is the Degani Johade Onigura Aradui Sanyatsu. It's the two row wampum covenant. The two row wampum covenant is actually something that's fascinating about our indigenous knowledge because it's based on a counting system that comes from the binary, binary uh, mathematical treatment that comes from the Mayas actually because the, that particular number is the number two in binary counting and it's the basis of computer technology actually they didn't crack it until much later with the Madrid and, and Dresden codices where the Mayas had their uh, mathematical knowledge recorded but it's come down to us in a way that is a sign and symbol of, uh, of Ongwehu and Neha or our culture that deals with the idea of binaries. Well, it has been used to describe the idea that uh, it is a treaty relationship between Europeans and indigenous people. As we're traveling down the river of life together, you and your sailing ship and us in our canoe, we are uh, bound by our friendship and that our mutual respect to protect each other and to respect each other as we're traveling down the river of life together and we'll go another level with that too by saying it in another way here's men and here's women the ma females and the males we're going down the same uh, river of life together oh by the way here's the living generations and here those that have gone on before us that's another binary oh by the way here's human life and here's the natural world that's another binary so it is a philosophical statement about interdependency and accommodation that is the way we see our human life together on uh, in our world is it's about interdependency and accommodation whereas another view of uh, human development is based on the idea of conflict and competition we're all in competition with each other and the fittest survive well, we don't say that. We express it not as conflict and competition, but as interdependency and accommodation. We are friends and we help each other to survive in our world together. And part of that is the idea of the uh, cosmology that is talked about among the Ongwahunwe uh, or the Rodinoshoni uh, is another way of describing who we are. And the cosmology actually is uh, reveres and pays homage to creation. So the creation story that starts with a sky world where events happened up there, but a woman came through the sky, landed on, a, on a, uh, uh, birds who cushioned her fall to the earth and landing on the earth uh, was able to then create a, a, a world to live in based on uh, her mission here on the earth which began there in the sky world. Uh, you'll probably hear that story over and over again about how the uh, sky chief and uh, the sky woman uh, were around a tree and there are three different versions. One is uh, the great Ahun Datsuna took her and saw how despicable life was down here on the earth, placed her through the hole and sent her down here to redeem us. There's another version of the story that says uh, that while she was around the hole uh, as they were digging around the celestial tree, the sky chief pushed her through the hole and she came down to the earth uh, and uh, while she uh, came through the, the hole in the sky, grabbed a tobacco plant and a strawberry plant and brought that and redeemed uh, a civilization by planting that and creating the earth on the turtle's back. There's a third version where she looked down and saw how horrible life was down here, how terrible we were and, and barbaric. And her great compassion was that she jumped through the hole, grabbing a tobacco plant 
and a strawberry plant and came down to redeem humanity. Those three versions tell us something. Are they all true? Which one is true? It doesn't matter. How do I feel today? Somebody up there is looking after me. How do I feel today? This was all a big mistake. She fell through the sky. Or uh, she came down here because of her compassion and her willingness to look after me. So it depends on how I feel today about how I look at the creation story. The binary again, Sky Woman came down to Earth, brought all our, uh, our uh, plants, our medicines, the tobacco medicine, the strawberry medicine. Her daughter, who perished in the part of the story and was buried in a mound, but all of our food plants grew out of her grave. And you have the binary between the left-handed twin and the right-handed twin, who have different parts of the uh, master narrative that they teach us about that uh, binary as well. And we have then the idea of the dark times, the dark times that were created by the rise of corrupt and uh, despicable leaders who drove us to despair and ruin. As part of that, we were redeemed when a, a holder of ultimate truth came and talked to us about using the good mind, practical reasoning to solve our problems rather than fighting, to be interdependent and accommodate each other rather than being in conflict and competition with each other. And in our master narrative that is based on those binaries, we have then the idea that we revere that uh, whole reality that was brought to us by our, uh, the sky woman and we say those kinds of things when we do uh, our uh, thanksgivings and we uh, talk and are thankful for the earth everything growing on it everyone who lives here all of the entities around us the sun the stars the moon uh, the idea that our, we have our our fellow human beings that teach us, our ancestors, our future generations, all of those are paid homage to when we talk about the idea of the sky world down. But there's another part of the binary. You see, Sky Chief stayed out there. So there's something going on out there on the other side. And in the Iroquoian cosmology, that the way it's talked about, but sometimes not told, is that there's something else going on out there. There's something out there, and the people that are out there, they call them the star beings, Oji Stongwe Sa'a. And the star beings have something else going on. So we have this uh, medicine beings that are around us here, Hadui, Gajisa, all of these medicine beings that we revere and we pay homage to. But there's something going on out there <coughs> that is beyond our imagination, but it is some other world that is also part of the binary. So there's from the sky world down, but then what's going on outside the sky world? And that's where <clears throat> we look to the sky and we see that in the Milky Way galaxy, and we know this now, uh, there are 300 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And they say that there are 100 billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy. And our Earth <clears throat> is 92 million miles from a star. Sol is the name of the star, or as we know, Solar. We know because of uh, Pythagoras and other people who do these kinds of things that 2 pi r tells us that it's 900 billion kilometers around the star our Earth travels on the orbit. And that we're moving at 105 107,000 kilometers an hour. So when I do my half hour here, <clears throat> we will have moved 52,000 kilometers through time and space together on one Earth as we move around the sun together for about two and a half uh, million kilometers a day together. And this is one of the things that we talk about and why it's so central to the Turo idea is, is that there are 7.8 billion people on Earth who are all indigenous to the Earth. And the idea of uh, cherishing that indigeneity to be indigenous to one planet as we're on our journey around the sun is an important feature of what that binary is. Because that sun is also part of the galaxy. And that galaxy takes 250 million years to go around in one orbit. Oh, by the way, on that side of the uh, 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 
the binary as well. They say in our universe, there are 2000 billion galaxies and 10 to the 45th power stars in that galaxy and 10 to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, how many zeros, 20 zeros, planets in that galaxy. And we're moving through time and space. And this is one of the things that I remember the teacher uh, around here as we are able to translate that into English is that all time and space exists everywhere, all at once, all the time. And we are part of that. And this is again, back to the binary. The idea that what they call Ahuntatsura in Moha. Uh, they use the word Songwaya Diso, they use Songwaya Rongkwa. Those are words that are uh, dedicated to certain parts of belief systems within the Ongwehoe and the Ongwehoe Neha. But the old folks, the old ones, use the word Ahuntatsura. And Ahuntatsura is uh, translated from the idea of, as uh, uh, we see in the world around us, green. When I asked the elder, is the grass green or is green the grass? Is Ofunte, does it mean that the grass is green or is Ofunte the word for grass? It's used for both. And the elder says, well, it doesn't mean that. It means uh, and I And I said, what? He says, it has nothing to do with that object or that color. It has to do with something that happens. When the snow is on the ground and the snow melts. You have a friend on your shoulder. He's just gone around the back of your hood. A stick insect. Oh yeah? Yes. He's yeah. coming around the oh, left. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Hey. There you go. Don't ask me how to say that in Mohawk. I don't know. So the idea of uh, Ohonde with green, or is the grass green or is green the grass, has to do with the old word, and this is what one of the old ones said, is it used to be, the word was ofuntok, ofuntok. And what ofuntok refers to is that time of the year when the snow melts, everything is muddy, and then one day we wake up and it's all turned green. It's all growing. It's just provided there. It's just there. The idea of how of, ofuntok is used and translates into it's the root word for the word for mother earth and for today it's just there so when they refer to what's going on on the other side of the sky world is they're saying it's just their ness is how i would translate it down but what it would really translate to, it is the isness. It is the isness of everything. So we have our world that we live in from the sky down, but on the other side of the sky, there's that isness of everything. And knowing that we're part of that, we come from that, we go back to it. Everything exists in time and space all at once, all the time like this guy here. Whoa, you're a friend. <laughs> so what does that mean? Why do I have to relax? Well, the day I was born is happening somewhere in time and space right now. The day I perish and go on my path up there, back out to the other side of the sky world, is happening somewhere in time and space right now. And as I go into the future, in those spirals, and here's a spiral, of the earth going around the sun and it's moving 250 million miles in the galaxy so there's a spiral and then there's the galaxy moving and it's moving through the universe in a spiral to a huge spiral 250 billion miles across and then the universe is moving in time and space as well so what connects me to my future generations and to my ancestors is that those spirals Here's the universal spiral. Here's the galactic spiral. Here's the terrestrial spiral. And here is me on the earth moving at a thousand miles an hour through time and space. And my mother and her mother and her mother. 
all the way back through time. And my descendants and my future generations all the way into the future. That's the connection that we all share, and that is why we're indigenous to one earth. Having said all of that and going, whoa, uh, is that indigenous knowledge? Uh, it's knowledge just because we know. How do we know? Look up. That's all you need to do. <clears throat> Go find uh, a river, take a canoe or a kayak, and go out on the river and look up. And in the day or those hours we spend on the river, 107,000 kilometers an hour as we're moving together on one earth, we then pay homage to all the binaries and we come to the realization of our interdependency and our accommodation. We accommodate each other because we're friends. And we're friends uh, because the idea of or compassion, our human compassion, is what uh, helps us to look after each other and to take care of each other. The part of the Ahwant uh, Datsura has to do with harmony. Interdependency and accommodation also shows that there's a harmony that goes together with this. That certain languages of the Ongwahuaneha languages have a cadence that matches with frequencies that they're able to detect in our world and in the cosmos. And there are people who do such measurements and they are able to see that these frequencies somehow align with when uh, you hear the elders say, uh, I need your power to help me do what I have to do every day. And those frequencies that are important one. And how we do that with each other is that we are able to able to help each other. And one of the things we did in the first couple of years of the two role that I was there about four years ago, I believe it was, or five years ago, was that we had a, a huge group that was uh, uh, left from Cambridge, a uh, hundred or so, I think. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to share with the folks there, which is the binary. There's the natives, there's the non-natives, there's women, there's men, and so on. So I had uh, one of the uh, paddlers help me. And the idea is this, when we stand together and we sit together, one of the ways we share is food the other way we share is by joining our voices together. So I'm going to sing you a song, and I want you to remember this. And when you come on to paddle with us, I want you to have this practice because we'll do this, right? And it starts this way. Uh, we all learn the chant. So we go, Oh, yana hey, ya, we, hey, ya, hey, ya. And we practice that, and we try it again. Oh, yana hey, ya, we, hey, ya, hey, ya. And as we get used to the idea, uh, some people say, so what do the words mean? Well, vocables are not words, they are meaning. And what is the meaning? That's up to you. Oh ho ya na he ya we he ya he ya Oh ho ya na he ya we he ya he ya Oh ho ya na he ya we he ya he ya And as we practice that with the group on uh, on the banks of the Grand River, we uh, have them sing as a group. No, I've been doing this for a long time. So the challenge is, uh, we can go back into canoes now if you can drown me out. Of course, I sing at the top, oh, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, and I do pretty good, right? But I also know enough to mute myself a little bit so they can win, so we can get back on the water. So we go, Oh, ho, ya, na, he, ya, we, he, ya, he, ya. Oh, ho, ya, na, he, ya, we, he, ya, he, ya. Oh, ho, ya, na, he, ya, we, he, ya, he, ya. Oh, ho, ya, na, he, ya, we, he, ya, he, ya. 
At another point in the journey, I have them sing, and I say, oh, by the way, there's another part to this. So, this is how the Degani Johade works then. You sing. Oh, yana he ya we he ya he ya. Oh, and they keep going. We he ya we he ya he ya. We he ya we he ya he ya. Oh, yana he ya we he ya he ya. Oh, yana he ya we he ya he ya. So, the sound is harmony. There's their line, and then there's the other side of that, which is then the melody. Oh ho ya na he ya we he ya he ya Oh ho ya na he ya we he ya he ya Oh ho ya na he ya we he ya he ya We he ya we he ya he ya We he ya we he ya he ya Oh ho ya na he ya we he ya he ya Oh ho ya na he ya we he let us go and paddle down the Grand River.